Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at GNS3. We're going to use this lab as an introduction into the GNS3 program. What I'm going to do is run through some of the basics in GNS3. Also, I'm going to give you a little background information about myself. Again, my name is Steve Bowler. I am a uh, systems consultant engineer in the St. Louis area. I work for a Cisco partner. Uh, I have several Cisco certifications. I am a CCNP, a CCDP, a CCIP, and I also have my CCNA, my CCDA, uh, CCNA Security, CCNA Voice, and CCNA Wireless. And I'm about to wrap up the CCVP, which is the Voice Professional, and then I'm going to do the Security Professional, and then the Wireless Professional. And then I'm going to, again, attack the CCIE uh, a little background information about me and these videos. I created a lot of these videos while I've been studying for the CCIE routing and switching lab exam. I created them to help me and to help others and to give you guys a great price on videos that are affordable and will help you wherever you are in your Cisco studies from CCNA level all the way up to CCIE level. So these videos are going to help you guys out and my main focus here is to provide a level of training to people that is affordable and top quality to others. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking a look at GNS3. This is the introduction lab. So we're just going to familiarize ourselves with GNS3. Again, I use GNS3 uh, just like a lot of other people do out there right now studying for the CCIE routing and switching lab exam. GNS3 can be used to replace pretty much all the routers that you need are needed before uh, you know studying with GNS3. GNS3 will allow you to do pretty much everything at layer 3 that you need to do on the CCIE routing switching lab exam. And it also allows you to tie in your real switches into this program. And you can see that also on one of my other videos I have it's called connecting real switches into GNS3. And so a lot of people have started studying with GNS3 because it's so powerful and it's not limited like other emulation or simulation programs out there on the market today. GNS3 is pretty much unlimited at layer 3. The only downside again is layer 2. It does not su provide as much support but again to get yourself some Cisco uh, switches does not cost too much so so again uh, I've already taken the CCIE routing switching lab exam once before uh, back in September of 2010 and I failed the lab and I'm going to go back here soon after I get a couple more professional level certifications I'm pretty much going to get all the professional level certifications and then go for the CCIE okay so to get started here what we're going to do is we're going to open up GNS3 and I'm going to run through it just like you already have it installed on your computer. You can find stuff out there on how to install GNS3 on your computer. Very simple, just a one simple step click wizard pretty much that you just go through and click, click, click and then you're done. So, Okay, so this is what it looks like here and our middle part here is where we put all of our devices we're going to be dragging them over here over here is our node types these are all the routers that are supported within GNS3 you can also set up frame relay switch which I show you I've got a lot of frame relay labs out there also we can use the cloud interface here to connect real devices into GNS3 also uh, I use that for our Cisco security device manager um, lab. So as you can see here we have a lot of different supported uh, router types. So all we need is the valid Cisco IOS image and again I cannot give that to you guys uh, that's in breach of Cisco's copyright so in order to get that you have to log into Cisco's website and download it. So what we need to do here to get started is click on file and then new project and that, this right here, is how we create a project. 
So if we click over here on this button, where we want this is going to show us where we want to save this. So we can just put it on the desktop for now and then name it whatever we want. So we'll just name it example one here. We'll save over this and hit OK. And that's going to create our .NET file. So now we have the project created. So now we can save it any time by just going File, Save. And I highly recommend that you do that often. Just save it every once in a while just, uh, in, just to be safe. You save it every 10 minutes or so just in case, you know, or so you ha don't lose all your data. So what I want to show you here is how to get a couple routers set up here. Before that, let's go ahead and go under Edit, and I'm going to show you how to put the iOS image into the GNS3 program. So we're going to go click Edit, then we'll click on iOS Images and Hypervisors, and then you'll see here that I already have a bunch of images here for my different platform routers. What we can do to add images is where it says Image File, we click on that button, and just browse to where you have your iOS images on your local hard drive. So we're just going to click on the iOS images folder and then we just click on the image there and click open and then it'll come back over and show up under under here. So say I have a 3600 you can choose the platform for that image, the model that you want to represent the idle PC value here, which we'll talk about a little later, and we can also talk, uh, or we can also choose the default RAM. So if we hit save there, and hit close, and what we'll do is we'll we'll drag one of these 3600s over here, and if I just mouse over the router it'll show you a bunch of information what the image is, how much RAM's on the router, the type of router, and a lot of other